Previously on The Gary Myers Show, The Gare Force gives you wetness. Hello, Leslie. How are you? We're going to give you wetness. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and you're not required to consume adult beverages. No. You're just invited to if that's what floats your boat. Yeah. So you can do your pacing any which way you want. Yeah. We're just going to wet your whistle a little bit. So if your whistle's a bit dry and you're heading out to a party, we'll give you a little wetness to take with you. And that's our goal here. We, we don't have any super agenda. We're not going to get into anything that's going to make you pissed off. Usually. Ellen's going to clip that. We're going to give you wetness. Yes. <laughs> Paying homage to Alan Delinka for putting together the cocktail show, as he does every Friday, because he likes to take clips from the previous week's show and dice them up and come up with something that is kind of different than the way I said it or you said it. <laughs> oh, well, that's why we love Alan, because he loves doing that and we love his work. It's spectacular. And I feel real good when I'm done. I think you do, too, Leslie. Oh, and, yeah. And that's not just because of the booze. We just really have a good time, and that's the only real theme here, and that will continue into 2022. Thank you for finding the Gear Force. I know there are a lot of podcasts to choose from, so we do appreciate you coming on board the Gear Force whenever you can. Like and subscribe, like and subscribe. Yeah. And please, please, please tell your friends and family to like and subscribe, too. All right. Yes. More eyeballs. It's a good thing. You can email me, Gary Meyer Show at GaryMeyer.com. Leave me a text or a voicemail, 773-888-2157. I'm constantly looking at all that and responding. And follow me on Facebook. I post something there just about every day, sometimes twice a day. And I like getting your participation in that area, too. Look at you. You're- oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And got his finger on pulse. Yep, yep, yep. That's what I do. I'm hip. Yeah. I LOL. <laughs> I OMG. I WTF. <laughs> hot coffee is hot. Breaking news is usually not. Thin ice is thin. Apes go ape. Wild animals are wild. And sharks live in the ocean. I'm a happy idiot. He makes it seem nice, too. I will know I have made it when my visage appears on a food item. This is the Gare Force. Bonsoir, my friends across the Atlantic. I am Etienne Picarin, and it is 2022 in my beloved France. So let me raise a glass as you enjoy the, uh, how do you say it? Uh, Gary Meyer Show Live Cocktail Hour Stupid Production at uh, 6 p.m. Eastern, 5 Central, and now I go to the bar and say what's this time zone. So I will just raise my glass of champagne while you raise your silly glasses so far. You need to spend your wine. Happy New Year! <laughs> Cocktails, woo, drinks. All right, here we go. Get ready to have a good time. This is exciting, isn't it? All right, we're on. Hello, testing, testing, testing. Welcome aboard the Dreamliner. It's the only way to fly. <laughs> Spartans, what is your profession? Podcaster, uh huh. Podcaster, podcaster. <laughs> Gary, Gary, Gary. Here's a young speaker who is really in demand. Don't let that go to your head, Gary. <laughs> but wait, there's more. The Gear Force gives you what is Gary Meyer. Gary Meyer, happy new year, buddy. See you at the World Series. Me and you and your buddy Ronnie Woo. And happy new year to you, legendary Chicago Cubs fan Ronnie Woo Woo. To everyone in the Gear Force. Thanks for streaming along with us on the New Year's Eve edition of the Gary Myers Show Cocktail Hour Live, December 31st, 2021. Of course, no matter where you are, it's time for a digital mimosa. For those new to the show, Gary podcasts five days a week. Tuesday and Thursday podcasts are available to premium subscribers. Listen to free shows and sign up for premium shows at GaryMeyer.com where you'll also find Gary's blog and merchandise. Friday's Cocktail Hour live shows stream free right here. Comments are welcome on all of our live streaming channels, and you can also text us at 773-888-2157. Regular charges may apply. All of our past live shows are available on the Gear Force Live YouTube channel. We also recommend it as the best place to stream when we're live. 
To go to our YouTube channel, you can just scan that QR code right now. Please take a moment now to subscribe on YouTube. It's free, and if you click that little bell icon next to the subscribe button, you can be notified when we're live. Like and share the show on all of your favorite social media channels, too. If you've done that already, thanks. Now, fasten your seatbelts. It's time to go wheels up on the Gear Force Live. Thank you, Alan Belenka. Yes, here we are. Last one of the, the, the hell of a year we had here in 2021. We didn't have a white Christmas, and we're not going to have a Betty White New Year's. I can't believe it. Betty White dies on New Year's Eve. If that doesn't sum up all of this year, what else would? I met Betty a few years ago, one of the nicest people I've ever met, and she was only a few weeks away from turning 100. That's what I'm talking about this year. Please, let's put a nail in it. Let's get rid of this damn thing, and we're going to do it the best way we know how to do it. Kicking the tires, lighting the fires, we're wheels up, drinking. That's what we're going to do to get rid of this year. Mm, that's a good Manhattan. Thanks to my wife. I love when I say to my wife earlier in the evening, honey, I'm going to work. Can you make me a Manhattan? That's why I love this country. Leslie has to officially get the festivity started by popping the wine condom. And Merry New Year! Yeah, there it is. Uh, as Mr. Pickering said, it's already... Midnight in France. Is that it's true? midnight somewhere. Yeah, that's so right. uh, what are you doing let's there? get this going. Um, I've got something sparkly because you always do something sparkly on New Year's. It's a Prosecco. Yeah. Um, and so I'm hoping we get some serious air with this one. Here we go. Uh, ooh. Ooh, 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 that'll that take was... your eye out. Oh, <laughs> now we're official. Okay. Now. Let, let me acknowledge some of the people who have checked in. Alan, you said that Keely Ann posted and she usually starts things off. Let's fetch on all fours with the Keely Ann text. Here's hoping that everyone's schnauzer gets a big, wet, sloppy kiss at the stroke of midnight. Happy New Year, everyone. Thank you, Keely Ann. Cheers. Lloyd checked in and said he's got to get the bread and milk. There was some snow in certain parts of the country. Got to get the bread and milk because if there is an inch or more, you go crazy and panic, according to our news operators. You got to get the bread and milk. Otherwise, all hell break loose if you don't, for some reason. Well, here in the Chicagoland area, they went from maybe four or five inches to seven or eight inches. And now some people are saying we could get a foot of snow. But really? it is January. Okay. Uh, so wrap your head around it. Uh, Leslie, if I don't have to go out, should I? Um. No, I don't think you should. Okay. And if you do go out, please bundle up. Yes. Okay. <laughs> and you wouldn't know that if you didn't watch the news. Because right. how would you possibly know that? Dale, Brian, Doug, 847 Doug, check it in. Johnny from Michigan, happy birthday. Johnny came to Chicago from Michigan to celebrate his birthday. And he met up with friend of the show, George, and the engineer of the show, George Bliss. And they went to the famous Billy Goat Tavern in Chicago and they cut some tape for us. And Alan, do you want to run that now? Sure, good timing. Yeah. I want a cheeseburger and a drink. What kind of, what kind of Coke? Yeah, I'll have a Coke. Coke, cheeseburger, double cheese is the best. Cheeseburger, cheeseburger, cheeseburger. No fries, chips, no Pepsi, Coke. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. My birthday. George is here. Did you have to prompt the guy to say that, or do they keep saying that even though that bit was 45 years ago on SNL? <laughs> no, it was automatic, Gary. Unbelievable. The guy's been there for 12 years. He was a high school wrestler, he told me, and he just did it. Hey, listen, these are the kind of people, they've been there since 1935. As a matter of fact, my father worked there in 1949. Can you believe it? So, yeah, we went to really? Billy Goats. It was great. It was a lot of fun. It was really a lot of fun. Food was great, too. Johnny is cutting a swath through Chicago mm -hmm. on New Year's Eve. He, yeah. I think he said he's going to see, is it Drunk Shakespeare? 
Actually, I think it's going to be Buddy Guy tonight at midnight. His daughter is playing tonight. So Johnny's got, I don't know where he gets all these tickets. He gets front row tickets. He's staying at a hotel. He has all the CTA passes. He's got Lou Malnati's receipts. The, the yeah, the, fa- the famous pizza place. And yeah. he'll do a weekend in a city like Chicago and spend all of $42. Um, Out I the door, his, everything. His budget for this weekend, he said, was $200. That's exactly right. It's, it's and, unbelievable. And he'll stuff $1,000 worth of entertainment in there. Oh, at least. Yeah. He okay. just knows how to do things correctly. I'm telling, we need to learn from him. There is but, something called drunk Shakespeare in Chicago, right? Yes, yes, okay. yes. Yeah. That brings up something. Leslie sent me Shakespeare insult bandages. Oh, wow. Yeah. Because I like I like to wear the band aids, and the yeah, one I'm wearing you? right now says, "Thou art a knave, a rascal, an eater of broken meats." Oh my! I love that Shakespeare <laughs> offensive stuff. And I see on the comment section, Scott checked in with this. He mentioned Two Ton Baker, and when I was a kid, there was a guy who hosted a TV show, and I don't know if it was syndicated or just in Chicago. The host was a large man, and he was referred to as Two-Ton Baker. Yeah, WBKB-TV. Okay. My point is that we've scrubbed all of what I consider entertainment off the screen. I know some of the stuff was offensive we had to. I agree. The N-word had to go. Okay, some of that stuff. But really, Two-Ton Baker and Fats Domino, would he have a career? Remember that guy? You couldn't call a guy that. Huh? Like, those guys would probably be considered... Just slightly hefty by today's standards. Right. Yeah, that's true. Two-ton Baker was probably 30 pounds overweight, but everybody was so damn oh. skinny. Yeah, yeah, oh, my God. Let's call him Two-ton Baker. <laughs> and that was a TV show. Now you so can't do that. So what did he do, do like sit on children, or what was the whole deal? <laughs> they yeah. did do a promo with him on a, on a bicycle or something where he was on a little bicycle. He did spread out, and he did look like two tons. But we don't have that entertainment anymore, and it's a damn crime. <laughs> Darn straight. Really? Okay. Who else has checked in here? Let me look through this. Johnny. Screen. Johnny says he'd love to come on. So if uh, if he wants to contact Keith, we'll uh, we'll bring. Yeah, him Johnny, on. call call Keith, and he'll put you on live. All right. I'm looking through the screen door. Cindy from Wheeling, Illinois. Lori. Um, pardon Barbara. Me, pardon me. Is your screen door upside down? Is yes, it is. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah. Thank laughs> uh, Happy New Year. Uh, uh, okay. Larry and Scott and Patty, Tracy, thank you. Tracy yes. sent me yeah. the Mickey she, Mouse Band-Aids. Yeah, she called me. It was She's wonderful. We yeah, from time. Racine. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay, Goofy. Goofy's already fed up with this whole thing. <laughs> Next Friday on the program, producer Harvey Moshman. Harvey has been on before because he does shows for PBS, and he's got a show coming up the following weekend from this one. And it will be a travel fest kind of thing. And he's going to cover, amongst other things, Tug Fest and Pierogi <laughs> Fest. Yes, that's what she said. <laughs> we'll find out more next Friday with Harvey. He's going to talk about that show on PBS. All right. I don't, wait, I don't it, want to know too much. I wait, just wait, 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 isn't it the imagine. Friday after next? Aren't we having Harvey on on the 14th? What's today? Today is the 31st. God damn it. Two I, weeks. I've lost. <laughs> Here's I what's going to happen. Okay. We're only in the first 10 minutes of the show, Gary. Okay. Let me see. How, oops. I think Uh-oh. I hit a little too much. I, okay. Full disclosure. I've had drinks every night this week. I decided this week it taint Christmas and then it taint New Year's yet. We're, we're in between and this is a free for all week. Nobody gives a shit. This year was completely weird. And I couldn't end the year any better than to have a drink every night. And so I've been drinking every night. And I will go on the rock after the show, take my shoes off. I'm going to sob for a long time (laughs) on this one. That's what I do. That's tradition on Friday nights with me after the show. I am sorry if I'm making no sense. It's two weeks from tonight. (laughs) Your liver is going to be out there sobbing, too. Yeah, here's what I do, Leslie. I I know. I go, I take my shoes off, and then I take my liver out, and then I squeeze it. Just squeeze it? Put it back in. Put it back okay. in. Hey, tell me if this is sick. Tonight, the ball's going to drop in Times Square. And I've been saying that, can't we symbolically put Ryan Seacrest in a wood chipper? That, to me, that's that's destination television. They um, should have, the Catholic Church should have a midnight mass on, wait for it, okay, 
on, on New Year's Eve. And then at 1159, Jesus comes down from the cross. Happy New Year. They could do it in some kind of animation. But we've got to do Midnight Mass on New Year's Eve. That's what I'm proposing. That's how I want to kick off 2022. Jesus comes down from the cross. It is weird to sit in church as a Catholic and stare at this man nailed to a piece of wood. And it just makes you weird, at least me. It's time for Jesus to come down New Year's Eve, Midnight Mass. He comes down, Happy New Year. And then he takes the crown of thorns and just flings it like Mary Tyler Moore. Okay. So you're one of those people who wants Buddy Christ to replace it. And that is, <laughs> what Jesus is didn't it? come here to creep you out. But uh, okay. I, I, I think I see 2,000 your... years of tradition, it's going to be a hard sell, Mr. Meyer. I see your Jesus, and I, I, I trumpet with my, <laughs> <laughs> my dashboard Jesus. Yeah. See? Uh-huh. We're right. oddly profane and kind of religious all at the yeah, same time. Yeah, we're, we're a, a bully base. I'm sure our guests are really happy to be on this program <laughs> right now after seeing that. Here's how the next two people became part of the show tonight. George, my friend and engineer of the show, George, what airport were you at, George, when you met Willie and Alexis? Well, hey, Las Vegas, Nevada, in a gorgeous United Lounge, and I saw this Two good-looking people. They looked smart. They sounded smart. And I had a drink with them. They even bought. They bought my drink. And then the conversation started. So the, the answer to your question is I was in Las Vegas. Wait a minute. You just went up to them and said, you look like two good-looking people. How about buying me a drink? How do you approach them? And what is that first moment when you approach them? Do they pull their luggage closer? <laughs> when you've been as homeless as long as me, Gary, you know how to beg, okay? And, <laughs> okay. And, they were, and Alexis was so nice and so friendly. We talked about dogs. We talked about radio. And then that was it. It flowed like water. Well, that's how I met George. I was walking down the street. Right. And he goes, hey, hey, how you doing? We start talking and you can't but not like this man. You know, Leslie, you've known him for a long time. <laughs> yeah. So that's how George meets people. And I'm glad you met Willie and Alexis because... I've always, as I mentioned on a recent show, I've always had this fantasy about living in Montana. It seems very zen. There are only 1.1 million people in the entire state. Yes. And it's a huge state. And they are working at a radio station, 105.9, the big fm are out of Billings. Let's bring Alexis and Willie on. Willie does the morning show. Alexis is their promotion person. Hello. Hi, guys. Hi. Is that is that about how it happened at McLaren Airport in Vegas? No, not even close. George is totally wrong. We met in Santa Fe. There was a yeah, yeah right. No, it was a furry right. convention. You were in a in a panda suit, George. And he only asked for one glass of something. That's yeah. it. It's hey, good. Yeah. Okay. No, and, he's exactly right. We met we met in Las Vegas, and uh, he Facetimed you, Gary, yeah. uh, right from the right. from the bar, and uh, that's how we met. Yeah. I've had this idea about what it would be like to do radio in a town like Billings. And it must be, and I'm hoping it is, because a lot of radio isn't that warm fuzzy anymore. But I picture it to be still kind of cool to just be on the radio in uh, Billings, Montana, population around 200,000, Montana, big sky country. Am I wrong? Or are, you've been there your whole life. You've lived in Montana your whole life, Willie. So how long have you been on the radio? I've been on the radio uh, 22 years, and you're right. Um, I left a really good job at Clear Channel, walked across the street, and took a job in a closet uh, for a <laughs> kind of our that, business. Yeah, but if you want to talk about it, go ahead. <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong with but that. No, I mean, I, I, I got the morning show, and I, I got program director, and it was, um, yeah, I mean, I, I had a very a very nice job. But we're locally owned, so you're right. This is a, a, a different thing. We're not the we're not the radio that you're familiar with that you had to go through for your entire career. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it had its zenith, but then I think it's gone over the mountain, and that's why right. if I went back to radio, to me it would be cool to go to a Billings or a place like that and just kind of get into it and be like Wolfman Jack. Wolfman <laughs> Jack was my inspiration. When I saw American Graffiti, and it was on that radio station in Mexico in the movie, and just the whole look of it, and it's just, that's what sparked me to think, maybe, maybe that's what I want to do. I still have this feeling that there are radio stations that offer 
that kind of vibe. And I think Billings, Montana, that's got to be it. You mentioned Clear Channel. Clear Channel is a company that owns a lot of radio stations. You work for a radio station in their company and decided to go to a, a competing radio station that's privately owned. Uh, we're actually locally owned. Um, our general manager purchased uh, from Connoisseur Media out in uh, Connecticut, uh, Jeff Warshaw. Um, our, our general manager, Cam Maxwell, bought our cluster and we are the largest probably media group in a free state area. We are the hub. Locally. locally You're the owned. hub. Yeah. Okay. Explain what a cluster is because in, in a well, lot of other areas, cluster is not a good thing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what I mean is um, lo we're the largest locally owned media conglomerate. Group. So we have we have six radio stations, and so a cluster is more than one, basically. It's what he was trying to say. Okay. All right. And that's why you're part of this, Alexis, because on uh, Friday night, because Willie has been up since two in the morning, by about this time of the day, he's delirious, and you've got to prop him up, right? That's, that's exactly I do what I, I can. What are you all drinking? Uh, Woodford Reserve. Nice. Well, cheers. 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 What's the format on 105.9? We're a classic hit station. We're very similar to the drive in, in Chicago. Drive in Chicago yep. that plays music from what's the latest era you will cover? Um, early 90s, U2, uh, Aerosmith. Okay. You know, yeah. and maybe a little you, bit later. We talked right before we went on about DJs who do this that I don't like, and I hope you don't do this, telling us how close we are to the weekend. And it was funny because in the comment section, was it Dale who said we're seven days away from the weekend playing on oh. that whole oh. thing well, about he's already was... planning on next weekend. He, we're seven <laughs> days away from next weekend. A lot of guys on the radio like to tell us how close we are to the weekend, even though it's Monday or Tuesday. Like, I wouldn't know that. And if they give the temperature, they will say outside as if they know the temperature where I'm at. One, one, Gary, I was going to tell you, we're 48 minutes to the top of the hour. That's another one. I oh, love that. Th time three ways. Second of all, it's a old George Carlin bit. It's eight degrees at the airport, which is weird because I don't know anybody that lives at the airport. Boom, right? <laughs> boom, boom, boom. I love all that stuff. As <laughs> I like to make fun of it. So you do the morning show. What time do you start? Uh, six. It's a six to ten. Regular okay. Morning and how long have you been doing mornings again? Twelve. Did you say twelve years? Uh, no, 16. sixteen. Sixteen. Okay, you're right at that precipice, Willie. Where Will you give up? <laughs> yes, <laughs> that. And a lot of morning guys who have done it that long start to lose their shit because <laughs> yeah, no, mainly, well, yeah. because it's it's a very rigorous way to make a living as far as the discipline you have to have to do it. I'm not saying it's, 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 it's worse than heavy lifting and driving a truck and no, all that. And that's yeah. what I'm no, not what I'm saying, but you got to get up. What time you get up? Four o'clock. Yeah. yeah. And you do that and you got to go to bed at seven. If you want to stay into some kind of rhythm, yeah. otherwise yeah. all the morning guys that I've known that did it for a long time, really flipped out. Yeah. And where I don't mean it, to put that in your, yeah. your 2022 pr predictions and the way it might go, but just be aware that that could happen. So, Look for an exit in the next couple of years. Thank you. Thank so you. afternoons or something. Get yeah, to yeah. the afternoon show. That's the best show you can have. Three to five sounds great. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's the best one to do. So uh, you grew up in Montana. Mm -hmm. Your your parents were there for how long before you came along? A uh, couple of generations. Yeah. Oh, so you're native Montanians. Yep. Yep. And tell me if it's what I think it is. Is it like the TV show Yellowstone? Yeah. We, aside we, from the family fighting and shooting and killing and all that <laughs> and, and making Native Americans unpleasant, no, I want to believe that it does look like the TV show. Yeah, we take courses to work. We just <laughs> now got internet just recently. Right. And you still don't like Native Americans coming into town, that kind of thing? No. Yeah. No, it's, it's absolutely nothing like that. Well, good, but, good. Because yeah. I hate that image. All those old <laughs> Westerns that I loved as a kid, now that I look, I look back at them and I think that's wrong, the Native Americans should have never been treated like that. If you want to scrub something, clean up all those old Westerns. Because the Native <laughs> yeah. Americans were vilified through the whole thing. They were here first, folks. Sorry, but they were here first. They should be respected. Okay. No, we look like a lot of other cities, just less people. 
Right. That's a million, right. Yeah. a million point one hundred thousand people in a state that's how big? Oh, huge. Huge. Uh, we, yeah. we don't even know. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's <laughs> you don't even know. You don't even you you were socially distancing 30, yeah. 40 years ago. Many years, <laughs> 100 years ago. Yeah. You're always six feet away from somebody because there's nobody there. That's exactly right. Yeah. If we can possibly help it. Here's what the deal breaker would be for me. It's the weather. Tell me oh. how bad the weather can get in the winter. Right now we're at zero, which is in improvement from uh, the last couple of days. Uh, some places in our state are 50 below with wind chill right now, <clears throat> which... Mm. That that's, sucks. Yeah, yeah, see, that's I told, right. I told you, Gary, so I grew up in Alaska, and let me tell you something. I've lived in Montana for more than half of my life at this point, but Montana has actually, like, this flip and switch of all of the weather. It will knock you down. So I think yeah. we hold the record for the, the largest uh, or, or the highest and the lowest temperature swing in a 24-hour period. If you look and what would that Montana. be? Uh, it was like oh, 58 55 degrees. degrees or something, and then it something was like 50 below <laughs> like the next day. Honestly. Right. It just happens. <laughs> okay. You got to talk about the cost of living. How is it to live there as far as that goes? It depends on where you live. <laughs> it's still yeah. better. You know, well, that's true. Um, it's still better <laughs> than Chicago. Billings is uh, – we're different than kind of the rest of the state where a lot of the Californians and the New York people have been moving in during COVID and buying up Bozeman, Montana, probably is the most expensive place in the nation to live right now. Yeah. Really because, because of all these rich people coming yeah, in and, and yeah. buying big swaths it's, of land and putting up these big ranches and stuff. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. Okay. You do have a state income tax, right? We do. Oh, but no, heard, we, don't, we don't have a state tax. We pay state income tax, but we don't have a, a what's it called? Um, You're going to ask me this right okay. now? <laughs> we don't have a sales tax no sales tax on anything no sales no. tax on anything okay and i read where you can deduct your federal income tax from the state income tax sure it's two separate things but that all, all that means is we still pay but we have to send two separate checks <laughs> okay i but... send one to the government i send one to the governor <laughs> okay <laughs> the fact is no state taxes how does the state pay for things? What What's their income? Well, we legalized marijuana. <laughs> but that's just recently. I know. Uh, we, alcohol. We really want to talk about this. There's no, a, really. We, what, how does the state, <laughs> Nevada, they had to do gambling because it's a right, desert. Right, right. And We have gambling. We, we have all of the vices. Okay. <laughs> um, but also, you do pay a state tax. You just don't pay a, a sales, sales tax. tax. No sales tax. Correct. Correct. On anything. Right. right. You buy a car, Never. no tax. No tax. Well, yeah, no. Oh, okay. Different than you guys, yeah. All right. And you can get a nice house for a couple hundred thousand? Sure. Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm just asking. I own my own yeah. home, and I, I, I yes, did. Yes, a couple hundred thousand. About 250000 gets you a great little home. A real good home, yeah. Because yes. you go to some areas, 250000 you go to California, you can't get a garage for that. Nothing. Well, Not a thing. And, and again... Montana is such a big state. Portions of the state totally different than where we are in Billings, Montana. It's okay. a different, different, different thing. Yeah. All right. So you are signed up for the long haul. You like doing it still, and you're going to be there for a while <laughs> yeah, until your your mind blows, and that could be in six months, a week, or whatever. It's one of those things, Willie, where you're doing it, you're doing it, and one day you don't know the Doobie Brothers from Aerosmith, and then it's gone. And I know. Boom. I'm it's over. <laughs> I'm riding it out as long as I can, Gary. I love radio. I, I know you love radio. I do. I mean. I do. Yeah, I, I, I had a long run and I loved it. Sure. And it, it's sad that it isn't what it was 20, it's 30 not. years ago. But like I said, Billings to me would be the place to go and do radio. And I think with a, a privately owned or a locally owned radio station, it still has that fizz that I, I still like. I that feel, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's the thing about radio is I've been working in this industry for about 15 years, a little over 15 years at this point. And the thing about Montana is, you know, it's so community based. And so it doesn't even matter. People can be 
outside of the state and still get our radio stations, but they want to know what's going on. And it's been great, especially the last couple of years. I mean, everybody's been so consumed with COVID and being indoors and, you know, you kind of need a reach out of the, of life. So. Yeah. And instead of giving out coffee mugs as prizes, mm -hmm. you give out guns, right? Isn't it, <laughs> aren't guns popular there? Any of these states that are very sparsely populated, you got to give away guns. People <laughs> love the guns. I have seen promotions <laughs> not far off from that, yeah. Okay, Lori Scott in the comment section, I was in Billings a year ago, and everyone complained about the Californians moving in, really complained. Oh, yeah. So they're, they're, they found it, and they are putting some... <laughs> some growth down in there from California. Oh, there we've, our state has probably increased by a quarter million people in the last two years. Mm -hmm. Two years. Yeah. Easily. Since COVID. COVID hit. And so when everybody went into quarantine, there's no better place than Big Sky because this is where you, like we were talking about earlier, you're, you're six feet away from somebody at all times, no matter what. I'm hearing um, this from people who live in Nevada they're thinking maybe they move to Utah because it's not as deserty and Utah is a beautiful state. So this is the migration that's happening mostly in the states that have no state income tax. Those are the states that are really bloating up quickly because people don't want to pay any more taxes than they have to. And a lot of those states are in the South. So the weather's better and that's the perfect cocktail for people to get out of the state they're in, mostly the Northern states, you know, the Rust Belt. Right. <laughs> Well, I, I got a Rust Belt for Christmas. It fits very nicely. <laughs> it, it's it's a great fit. My hands get a little brown when I put it on. But so, hey, I'm, I'm glad that George met you. And I just wanted to say hello. Wish you a happy new year. What's going on in Billings tonight? Any big doings? Ooh, I, not, not a whole heck of a lot. We're at, you know, five degrees right now. I mean, there's obviously everything that goes on in the city um, is happening. But um Willie actually used to be the grand marshal for the New Year's ball drop in the center of town, but I don't think that's happening. <laughs> so, Willie, you're like the Howard Stern of Billings. Uh, sure. Yeah, yeah he's the <laughs> grand marshal. He's he's doing all the stuff. He's he's Willie. He's Willie Tyler, man. He is. All right, I like that. <laughs> Well, hey, Happy New Year. It was great talking to you, and I want to stop by sometime and, and visit in Billings. We'd love to have you. Thank Absolutely. you. Thank Thanks, you. Willie Gary. Tyler, Alexis, 105.9 in Billings. All right. Wow. Ah. Cheers. Leslie, you want to move to Montana? I. I kind of do. Um, Chris, our listener, remembers when Willie used to do ventriloquism. I don't think it's the same <laughs> Willie Tyler. Um, it, okay. Maybe it's a relative. Good memory, though. Willie Tyler and Lester. Remember mm -hmm. that? Yeah. And wasn't Willie black? I don't yeah. see color. Yeah, kind of a whole yeah. different thing. <laughs> kind of different. Um, also, Cisco Cotto checking in, and congratulations to Cisco. He's one of those people still doing terrestrial radio, Cisco and he just got I, a new gig. Cisco and I worked together at a radio station in Chicago. And you, did you work with Cisco? Um, I no, I don't. Well, maybe like only in passing. All right. I didn't well, spend we worked together. Yeah, yeah. I, I like Cisco, and I love his name. I mean, Cisco. Isn't that it yeah, is I mean, it is a on. fabulous radio name. His real name Larry Schmaltz, but uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. And they thought that's not radio enough. I'm going to go Cisco Cotto. I don't think Cotto. it's going to work. Cisco. <laughs> hey, Cotto. Cotto. Um, Cotto. I love that game. Uh, we should probably also set up the giveaway. And yes. I'm thinking hashtag Big Sky in yes. honor of our guest today. I like that. Yes. So you type that into the comments section, and then later in the program, the computer picks a winner of the condom, the wine condom that Leslie released earlier, and a Gear Force scarf. There's what a prize condom. package that is. There's the scarf. Yes. Um, and hey, if you have one, because you know we've been doing this a couple of months now, but if you've won, sit on your hands for just a little bit, maybe, and let other people get a chance to win. Uh, it, just let's spread the wealth around a little yes. bit. Just, yeah. And and we'll we'll uh, we'll make it up to folks if they help us get our YouTube numbers 
into that next range where YouTube unlocks things for us. And it's not exactly clear where it is, but it's more people than we have now. So go to that YouTube page. I put that QR code right in the opening. Rewatch the show, scan that QR code, go to the YouTube page, like it, subscribe, click that little bell. And we're going to tell us what you get at a certain point. So I know what you're talking about and everybody else does. Well, some of the things that, that YouTube allows us to do would be to embed the show right on your website. Uh, we can't do that with YouTube right now because we don't have enough subscribers. That's the sort of thing that YouTube unlocks. Spread out. We want to there's, concentrate. There's, there's a couple of other features, like right now when I post the link to each week's show, um, it's just a static link. I can actually post little trailers in YouTube if we have more viewers, but that's not unlocked for us. Stuff like that. Little little okay. little gems, yeah. little Easter eggs, things that'll make watching our show that much more fun. That's all. We're trying to do it for you, the listener viewer, to make your life a little better and easier with this whole thing. Well, I think Ryan is ready to tell us what he's assembled for this week out of Wisconsin. Ryan. Hey Gary. Hey Leslie, how are you? Hey. Good. How okay. you doing? Hey, good. I got the fireworks in the background. I know you're talking this Ooh. week about uh, got the plane and the fireworks. So, all right. And what's going on in Waukesha tonight? Anything? I don't know. We're kind of laying low. Uh, I think we're going to make some pizzas at home and uh, just kind of play some board games from yeah. from Henry's birthday. So he had a birthday on the twenty first. So, okay. And um, do you want to share with everybody how the uh, how it went when you were getting ready to leave? I, I have a photo of that. So we we had it at a local water park. We got everybody out after five hours of swimming. And my wife texts me and says, uh, got to get out here. They're shutting the pool down. And uh, unlike when you swam naked, they were worried about sand. We didn't swim naked, but they had poop in the pool. Poop in the so, pool. So they came with uh, like yellow <laughs> caution tape and maintenance came out and sprinkled uh, sprinkled chlorine around there there's the caution tape so shut the shut the whole thing down so and then bill murray came out with the baby ruth bar <laughs> that is so not it was baby a good ruth. way to end, it was a good way to end the party we laughed uh, and it was kind of a funny event how, how many hours were you there did you say five hours five hours at a water park are you continuously in the water i mean come on your your skin He's must still have been... wrinkled yes <laughs> How do you spend five hours at a water park? <laughs> well, be, between that, the kids had got to have pizza and cake and, you know, kind of messed around outside the water. So well, maybe they were in the water four well, hours. But you here's know. the bit. You serve pizza, cake and all that. That's why you have poop in the pool. <laughs> <laughs> and I made the mistake of telling Henry you shouldn't eat before you swim. So he wasn't didn't want to eat at all because he thought he would get a stomach ache to swim. I said, no, no, forget about I even said that. Yeah. Well, that. <laughs> That whole thing about when I was a kid, you would have to wait an hour after you yes. ate some myth that finally went away. Nobody knew why that was ever a thing. And it wasn't anything. No, uh, you don't get the bends for being in a kiddie pool. Um, no, you but, get the poops. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and, Which and, is and actually the worse. Dude, give me the bends. Cause... <laughs> yeah, really? <laughs> wow. And the other thing I discovered at the store, I, uh, if you want to share that uh, next to image, Alan, um, I was noticing this is the belt that the, you know, I keep track of the dirty belts at the stores. This is the belt that they use to move the groceries down after they scan them. Look at how clean that is. Yeah. And I said, how, boy, how your belt's clean. And they said, well, we keep ours clean. That's ours. And the other one's yours. So I thought, oh, okay. What? I didn't what pay attention before. What do you mean that's before. ours and the other one's yours? What does that mean? It means we keep ours clean. Yours is dirty. <laughs> it's kind of like pre-scan and post-scan. So if you go to the, ne I have one more here. You see how the the difference there. So okay. I, I just never noticed how different the belts were until I was standing there waiting in the long line the other day and went, I'm going to ask, why not clean both? So, wait, you mean when it goes through that, that metal piece there, it's cleaned? Yeah. After no, it's, it's two separate belts. So the, the, the belt that you put your grocery on, they scan, and then they put it on another belt by their waist that goes down to the bagger. That's the belt they keep clean. The one, they don't care about the other one. That's pretty much what the guy said. And I never noticed um, the difference. That's not science. <laughs> yeah. I hate to tell you, yeah. but there's something flawed in the way this has been figured out. Yeah, we've been talking about this for many, many months about you go to the grocery store and nine times out of 10, the belt is wet. And you don't want to put your groceries on a wet belt. I touched a handle today and it was sticky. Oh, and I, yeah. I honestly did the cootie shots. I mean, it yeah. was, yeah, yeah, not a good feeling. What was the so, handle at, at a grocery store? Yeah. 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 On the cart. And uh, so, on the cart. of course, 
Well, yeah, so I, I you, had to you have one of those. Gary's going to bust out I exactly. I know. <laughs> Clean that, card. Ryan put that on the handle. Space. Yes. Dang Hank it, found I those at Menards. So uh, uh, there you go. Yeah. Uh, in six months, we're all going to be dead anyway. Omicron apparently is just completely eating the earth right now, like Pac-Man. And, uh, and, and on one hand, it's eating the earth. On the other hand, uh, that's not doing anything. Gonna, I don't know what to do. Right. That's why let's put a nail in this year, move on, and hopefully next year will be better. And speaking of um, Omicron, in my report uh, here, the video report, you'll you'll get to see uh, a follow up to one of Leslie's stories about that nice family restaurant in West Bend. Named Bearing Omicron. That same name. Yes. All right. Are we ready to run that, Alan? Sure, we can run it. Ready? Yeah. Here it is. I said, here it is. I said. It's Wisconsin, yeah, hey. Hey, it's Ryan. And I have a few updates this week from Wisconsin. I hope everybody had a great holiday, got everything they wished for, and didn't have too many fights around the dinner table. I myself did a little traveling around, and I ended up stopping at the Omicron Family Restaurant in West Bend, Wisconsin. If you remember back a few weeks ago, Leslie had this story about the, the restaurant because of its name. They also made t-shirts that said, I had a Corona at the Omicron Family Restaurant. Well, they were sold out all of the t-shirts, but I had a great lunch and learned this is a local hangout and that this has really helped their business. They said business is booming and many people are traveling from Illinois and around the state of Wisconsin to come eat at this restaurant and have their picture taken. I also, at, towards the end of my lunch, heard some ladies next to me arguing about who was gonna take the crackers home in their purse. I thought that was pretty funny, but it was a good day. If you remember, the Lego brick Titanic set was all put together and that set sale a few weeks ago. We've set our eyes on the Home Alone house now. Here in the picture you can see we've put the van together Here's a picture of Kevin on the sled and we've started assembling the house. I expect that to be ready in the next couple of weeks and I'll share more pictures. It's been fun to do this over the holiday. It keeps us busy and our mind off of everything going on. Finally, I wanna wrap up that the Packers are doing very well. If you're not following football, Aaron Rodgers, as Gary says, is a stud and has passed some of Brett Favre's records in this last game. We're looking forward to them winning the Super Bowl this year, so then, Je then Aaron Rodgers can go back to hosting Jeopardy. Have a good week and enjoy the new year. All right, Ryan, you've got the foundation down for the Home Alone house. Christmas is over, so you're going to get it up and put it all away, or you're going to leave it together and well, then put it in the closet what do you do with that yeah we're gonna we're gonna leave it together kind of keep christmas going for a little bit so yeah um, but i mean even after all the holidays whatever some people go to russian christmas greek christmas yep. and go mid-january and say it's still here yeah. what are you going to do with the house after all that is done we'll probably put it uh probably either in hank's room or maybe up on top by the white house in the living room and just kind of tuck it up there so um, and it does open so you can actually see inside the house, which is, which is pretty cool. So, oh, okay. yeah. So we started with kind of the fun things, the van, Kevin on the slide, some of the, some of the easy wins. Did you purchase the lighting extra? What is it? A $50 light kit that you kit. can get for? I showed Jamie for both of them. She's yeah, we don't need that. I got to take the stuff back apart to put it in there. So I said, okay, okay. glad you didn't buy it for Christmas. This so. is not a bad investment as we found no. out Lego sets that have been discontinued have increased in value over the years more than gold and other things like stocks. So yeah, you might we be saved all the boxes. Here. We saved all the boxes and kind of all of the, the setup with it. So, um, you know, if we ever want it, we have the, especially the Titanic, you know, cause it was packaged so precision, you know, yeah. it was almost like the Apple, when you get your phone, it just had a box and a box with nice square corners and, you know, pretty oh, good, that's a good graphics feeling. around that. So, yeah. And, and, yeah. and, the, the Apple boxes, I, I I love tight corners. Why? I don't know. But they are the tightest corners. I don't know yes. how they do it, but those boxes, you could cut meat on them. They're so sharp. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I yeah. love that precise. And that's Steve Jobs. It, it's right. all precise. That's what yeah. he did. That's why it's so yeah. great. And, and right. the highlight of those those ladies fighting over the crackers. So, oh, yeah. Uh, that's a thing. <laughs> and, 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 it is. And, and it's usually older ladies yes. who want to take the crackers home and they'll yes. take some of the sugar, too. Yes. They'll, and they were, they were sitting next the sugar. to And they said, well, then they said, who are you going to think about when you eat those crackers at home? And I thought, wow. And then mm -hmm. the one lady that took the crackers said, I have to wrote the name down, William Ching. 
And I said, so I quickly wrote it down. I guess he's an Ivy League handsome Western and drama star from 1951. Jeez. Uh, sounds like you eavesdrop on people. Uh, well, there, they, right? were, they were right next to me. And then <laughs> on the other side, the lady says, how's the hamburger? I said, fine. Should I get it? I said, well, it's not a bad choice. So hey. it was kind of kind of a weird experience, but it was fun. It was, so I was by myself. So is actually benefiting from this, which is oh. great. I'm glad that oh, that didn't yes. roll them over. The food looks really hearty and well, good. The food was the food was excellent, and and there's a lot of the locals were there that have been coming there for 25 years. You know, I think there's a man that eats all his meals there. You know, they they all know each other, and I think it's a family you know passed down. So yeah. yeah, it was it was a good time, and again, I went by myself and just kind of sat there and took in the atmosphere because I was in the neighborhood. So. And Did you take your crackers home? I know I ate my crackers, but I just thought that was the funniest thing. And if you did take crackers home, Ryan, who would you think about when you're eating them? <laughs> I don't know. I, 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 I might. I, it was just yeah. funny. She said, and the other lady said, well, if I would have got them, I would have thought about you because you would have given them to me. And I thought, oh, OK. Jeez, wow. <laughs> but, but if you noticed, if you noticed in the package, they do disappear. It yes, was one I of those saw little that. Easter eggs. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Ryan. Happy so, New Year. Thanks yes. for all that you've done on the show this past year. Appreciate have a it. Good, have a good New Year. Talk to you all later. Right. All right. And I realize I'm five years away from carrying that piece of tinfoil in my purse in case I have to, you know, do some quick wrap something. To, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> There's my Bernie Sanders look. Yeah. Oh, my God. Okay, let's take care of the great sponsors of the program. And then you have some stories, Leslie. And I want to say hello to producer Keith and wish him a happy new year. He's a big part of the show. He does Monday through Thursday of the Gear Force. And let's say... Let me, let me just point out, Keith, Keith said he had uh, Johnny on the phone. Johnny's still on Oh, yeah, now. Johnny. Oh. Is Johnny let's, there? Let's, let's put Keith in the show and he'll get Johnny up for you. All happy right, new year, Keith. And your lovely wife, Misty. Merry New Year. Misty. His wife's name is Misty. That's a cool name. Yeah. Right there, you got something going on. Johnny, are you there? I'm here. You hear, can you hear me? I can hear you, Johnny. Happy birthday. Thank you guys very much. Um, I'm, I'm in the hospital right now. Oh, and there are seven other guys in my room staying tonight. You're in the hospital? No, it's got to be the hospital. Oh, hospital. Oh, hospital. Oh, okay, I thought, okay. oh, God. Here we go. He comes to Chicago from Michigan. <laughs> and with the reputation Chicago has right now, I was on uh, the boulevard that everybody oh. travels, Michigan Avenue, and I was shot, and I'm in the hospital. That they don't um, need on New Year's Eve. So you're in the hostel. What are you doing tonight? Buddy Guy's legend. And his daughter is going to appear? Yes, his daughter is the first act. Okay, is it, is she Buddy Gal? <laughs> no, she's Harley Guy. Okay, I'm just looking oh. off. Well, Buddy Guy is amazing. Yeah, I saw him with the Stones when the Stones would come through Chicago. They'd bring him on because their music is completely taken from guys like Buddy, and the guy is amazing. Oh, wow. If you've ever seen him live, oh, it's a, it's going to church. It's a good thing. And you're going there sometimes tonight. Before he, sometimes before midnight, he comes on stage and plays a couple of songs. Okay. So you'll be there through the new year. I go home tomorrow morning. Okay. How are you traveling? On bus? Train. How much is the train fare? I got it for seventy dollars going back home because I got business class. Okay, and you should do a travel show, Johnny. I mean, really. I, I, I'll give you a rundown. I paid twenty five dollars for Drug Shakespeare last night. I paid twenty five dollars for the uh, party of Buddy Guy's Legends tonight. Okay. That's all. And you, yeah. George picked up yeah, lunch yeah, at uh, and and George picked up lunch at yeah. Billy Goats. Yep, I had Burkhoff yesterday for lunch, <laughs> and they gave me a book, uh, a free slice of birthday cake, really good, <laughs> and that that, was, that cost us twenty five dollars with the tip. And last night, Lou Malnati's cost us uh, fifteen dollars with the tip. 
And um, then I had breakfast this morning at a Starbucks, five bucks. Because I got the free birthday drink. <laughs> and then tonight, um, gumbo costs nine dollars. All right. Hey, I hope you have a great birthday, Johnny. Hey, Gary, thank you for being such a good friend to me. You know, you you guys have really helped me out with my broadcasting stuff. That's thank all you right. Very much. I'm happy to help you. I love you. You're you're such a great guy. I appreciate seeing George today, and um, you know, I was hoping to see you, but I got to see George. Well, so. I'll I'll see you somewhere. Leslie, Leslie, Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year, Johnny. Happy birthday, too. Uh, it's always great talking to you. Uh, happy New Year to Martin, Scott. Um, someone else was talking to me on, on the chat. I forgot her name. I apologize. A lot of people are wishing yeah, you happy uh, birthday uh, on the comment line there. So you can just check it out there, Johnny. Martin, Nancy. Hey, thank you very yeah. much. And Yep. Happy right. New Year, everybody. Merry New Year, everybody. All right, Johnny. Yeah. Johnny from Michigan. On the move. Wow. Okay. Uh, He's yeah. amazing. I like know. you said, he really does deserve a travel show. <laughs> and I think it would be 10 times more interesting than a lot of the travel shows. Although I'm hooked on this one on the Japanese network where the guy, I, it's called like Street, Somewhere Street. And he just walks around and he has this voice, kind of a, an Asian Mr. Rogers delivery. Oh, look at all the pretty flowers. Hello oh. there. Where did you get all the pretty flowers? Oh. If you get a chance, check it out. It's, it's very, really it's very hypnotic. It's very Zen. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Let's, Speaking of Zen, so are our advertisers. Yes. Let's pay homage first to Bettenhausen Automotive. Right. <laughs> For more than 60 years, Bettenhausen Automotive has been committed to providing the best sales and service experience in the Chicagoland area. Bettenhausen has hundreds of new vehicles in stock with no hassle and no haggle. Get the best financing and lease deals of the year during the Big Finish 2021 event going on now. Bettenhausen Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram, more than an automotive retailer, a member of the community. Your best car buying experience starts now at BettenhausenCDJR.com. And the man who you should go to and his team for a mortgage or refi, this is the guy. I talked to David yesterday, and uh, he wants to thank all of you for calling for the free consultation and doing business with him. He is the sugar daddy that got the scarves, the Gear Force scarves for me, and all the other items I gave away over the years. This is the guy. He really takes care of business, and he'll save you money. So if you're going to buy a home, Call for the free consultation if you want to refi. And there are a lot of other things he knows about as far as saving money on your home value. Call for that. There's the number right there on the screen. All right. David Hochberg, thank you, David, for all your support. And Jeff wants to know what you're doing for New Year's Eve. Leslie, anything special? Um, I think the husband and I are going out, but I'm going to start. And okay, Jeff sent me a rose. He may want to keep it for a minute because uh -oh. um, tradition in our house is you got to have some pickled herring. Um, so I'm going to be starting off with some of that oh. right now. How mm. does that taste? Herringy. <laughs> and, <laughs> and she's going to lean over and spit it out in a napkin. And just, there it goes. No. I, I... Yeah. I've been doing this since I was a baby. They train you to do yeah. this stuff. Yep. Uh, how glad are you to see this year end? I can't tell you how yeah. glad I am to see this year. And I am so optimistic for 2022. Let's let's get something. I, I know we cool said this going. last year, but I really do feel that this is going to turn a corner here in the next few months. Uh, I, I feel it. I think. From your gonna, lips to God's ears. And God listens to podcasts. So God is listening right now. Turn the corner for us, God, please. Hope you didn't mind that whole cross thing. No, no, that's that, a yeah, positive it's a thing. I want to get you. Good fun. God, I want your son to come down and wish everybody a happy new year. There you Time go. to come down from the cross. That's all. Nothing beyond that. Um, so, yeah, the big news right now is the fact that Betty White died, but uh, it's not a I mean, entirely Well, they're make, they were making this big to-do about her 100th birthday. So that was, and it's only a couple of weeks away. 
And so there is still supposed to be this one day theatrical release on the 17th and she was supposed to be there. It's the star studded event with uh, Ryan Reynolds, Robert Redford, Tina Fey. Uh, they don't know what they're going to do with it yeah. right now. Wow. So what a, what a way to end the year though. Here's a woman who by all appearances and I did meet her and she was great, but to have that long of a career, she had to be something special because people wanted to be around her. And right. you wouldn't have that long of a career if you were a total jerk. So she dies on New Year's Eve, which sums up this whole year, right? Kind of. Yeah. Um, well, on a, on a lighter note, it turns out that Gary is not alone in his dislike of inflatable lawn decorations. A woman in California has posted video of a bear cub mauling a giant inflatable reindeer as its mother watched. Deers... Um, or rather bears, are not uncommon in this neighborhood that abuts the San Gabriel Mountains, but it's not every day that residents see a bear trying to take down Rudolph. The cub in the video goes straight for the deer's throat, but can't <laughs> quite seem to get a proper mouthful, and then it makes several more attempts before a parting shot at the deer's antlers, he then follows mom back into the forest. What's really surprising here is just how resilient this inflatable is. Even after these multiple attacks, the darn thing is still holding air. The worst thing ever invented, inflatable <laughs> decorations. Really, I hope more animals do that. Kill these inflatables. Uh, one more week. I, I think, uh, although no, some people with inflatables, I get the feeling might keep them up for a couple extra weeks. Oh, so. God. Oh, well. Lawn puke. Uh, <laughs> Three people were killed at a hospital in Ukraine after someone decided to light a, mem a memorial candle right in the intensive care unit. The candle was meant to honor those killed by the pandemic, but it just happened to be adjacent to a bunch of open oxygen tanks, which, if you know oxygen... Was very flammable. The resulting explosion killed three, injured several others, and caused extensive damage to the ICU at a time when the department is already stretched to the limit. I'm going to light the candle to honor the dead of COVID. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Idiot. Um, there is help on the way to ease the current French fry shortage in Japan. This week, a U.S. air freight company sent three planes, 747s, filled with potatoes to Japan to help end the rationing of French fries at McDonald's restaurants there. If all goes as planned, the uh, fries should be arriving at those restaurants right about now, which means plenty of French fries for 2022. And maybe that guy you saw doing the touring of Japan will mentioned french fries why well, look they are what? selling french fries do you like those french look fries? delicious do you like would french you? fries sure <laughs> i knew kind you would yeah watch yeah. for it you guys it, okay what's the you don't know the name of it uh I, it's somewhere street somewhere street okay that wasn't me losing my my memory no. it, it actually is called somewhere street yeah okay and speaking of airplanes, a woman en route from chicago to iceland for some reason tested herself mid-flight and tested positive for COVID. And when the test back came back positive, she decided she had to quarantine. Marissa Fotio took five rapid tests prior to getting on the flight, but about an hour and a half out of Chicago, she decided for her own peace of mind to take one more. And wouldn't you know it, it came back positive, causing her to freak out. Quote, I was hysterical. I was crying. Flight attendants tried to switch some seating around to separate her from others on the plane. When that didn't work, Fodio locked herself in a restroom for the remainder of the flight, about three and a half hours. Once in Iceland, she was taken to a Red Cross hospital where she remains in complete isolation. Okay. Three and a half hours in the bathroom. So that bathroom is out of commission for the rest of the passengers, number one. Yeah. And isn't it, I don't know if the word is illegal, but you can't have a passenger on a plane without a seatbelt. How did they get around that? I guess I, having her in the cabin, thinking it might affect other people. So I don't, I, I don't know how this works. I, yeah, it seems like it was not real well thought out. And you know what? Sometimes I think it's better not to know. She had taken five tests. They all came back negative. Just go with that. All right. I, I can't imagine sitting in an airplane bathroom for three and a half hours. I'd rather I, have COVID. That's one of those places where you go potty as fast as you can right. and get the heck out of there oh, as yeah. quickly. Oh, yep. Well. 
So I think that's about that. For that's now. it. Should we do the giveaway? We should. Okay, here's what we're going to do. Alan's going to push a button. The computer's going to pick a winner at random for the Gear Force scarf and wine condom. You ready to go, Alan? Uh, actually, no. <laughs> what the H E double? Yeah, the computer. Stuff. The computer's asking for new permissions because it's actually a new com computer. So I need to push a couple of buttons to give oh. it permission to see that screen. All right. At least uh, it's uh, the and I can't do it. I can't do it while we're talking here. All right. Well, so, let's bring up Keith while you're doing that, and just wish right. Keith, producer Keith. Uh, Happy Sounds New good. Year and his lovely wife, Misty. Keith, thanks for all your help this year. I'll be right back. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. Uh, it's, uh, it, you know, uh, 2021 actually wasn't too bad until the last couple of weeks, but, you know, we'll, we'll put a nail in it anyway. Yeah, really. Uh, well, it, it's just, it was all over the map. It had some moments where we thought we're getting out of it, and then we went back in it, and then gas went through the roof. And it's all crazy stuff. Inflation, everything's more expensive. And here, I have Lotto Fever. The Mega and the Powerball are up there. So I've got, of any fever, I'll take Lotto Fever. And I've got it. So that's a good thing. That's a good thing. What is it? It's like 400 million? I think Powerball well, is 500 is million and Mega is 221. Not mm -hmm. that I pay attention to it. Once again, that's not daunting money to you. It's not that. Kind I want to daunt. Leslie, okay. daunt the bejesus out of me at this point. <laughs> yeah. I want to be daunted like there's no tomorrow. And there might you not be. You already have the yeah. business plan. At this point, so. there isn't. Yeah, there is no tomorrow. Uh, yeah. I'm, listen, you know, I've been planning this my whole life right, right. of how I would go about this. And you won't even know, but I'll do good things with it. Okay. Putting that out in the universe. Then All right. Dan. I think I'm back. Am I back? You guys can hear me? I yes. Can hear an echo. yes. All right. Let's see if I can share the tab. Giveaway tool. Share the tab. <laughs> and I'm not seeing anything. Oh, I got to add it to the this stream. This is not going to impress our friends in Billings, Montana. I'll tell you no, that right now. But you know, I've got, I've got a correspondent in the UK on the other line, but it's still 30 seconds. So let's quickly do the drawing and then we'll go to the correspondent in the UK. Okay. All right. All right. Button. Here, so we go. The button. Here we go. Here we go. Sue Scott. Congratulations. Congratulations. You're going to get a condom and a scarf. Send uh, Gary a private message on Facebook. Send and, me your uh, address, yes. Get us your address. Let me uh, let me go to the UK because we're coming up on five seconds and this correspondent is standing by. I just need to find the button to bring the correspondent on. It's five seconds to midnight. It's five in... seconds to midnight in London and here we go. Five, four, three, two, one. Hello there, it's me, Nigel Pickering, here in old Lottie. That's England, eh? Now back to Gary and Leslie and the Gary Meyer Show Cocktail Hour Live. I think I got it all in, but it's the New Year's Eve Spectacular. Don't worry, mates. It'll be New Year's Eve in the States before you can see Bob as your uncle. Cheers, eh? Oh, God. I really, my goal is to be an alcoholic by then of 2022. And I'm proud of that at this point. Uh, take mm. that, Ryan Seacrest. That's right. Why can't we put Ryan in a wood chipper symbolically? <laughs> Come on. And then is uh, Jenny McCarthy they... going to kiss random service people tonight in front of her husband? In front of is her that... husband? Yeah. I, well, that's what you like to watch. And then uh, the two Andes go at it a yeah. little uh, yeah, later. Yeah, the drunk so... Andes and, and all the giggling. And they have all kinds of New Year's Eve th things going now. They thought the different networks, we got to get in on this. And oh, God. George, thank you for introducing us to Willie and Alexis. Yeah, and our good friend Mark Jean Greco says, sorry you couldn't come on tonight, but he'll be on tonight oh, okay. on Channel well, 5 yeah, yeah. Okay. with Janet uh, Davies, our old friend. If you're friend. not familiar with this, Mark was the premier sportscaster for, on the ABC station in Chicago for many decades, years, and then they whacked him yeah. a few months ago, and he would do a New Year's Eve show with this other woman who was on the ABC station, Janet Davies, and she yes. got whacked. So they went to the NBC station. Channel 5, yeah. They're going to be on the NBC station in Chicago. And don't they soul kiss at midnight? Isn't that their thing? 
Well, they're not saying, but I think they're going to. Yes. Yeah, that was their thing. They would soul kiss for a long time at midnight, and everybody would talk about it the next day because it was awkward, and that's the way. <laughs> if you don't want to go awkward, don't watch it. But I, I like awkward, although I didn't like Dick Clark after the stroke. I don't want to watch a guy struggle with a stroke going into a new year. So that I don't like. Awkward is soul kissing somebody that you think you shouldn't be soul kissing. That that kind of thing. So and only fifteen thousand people wetting their pants in Times Square tonight. There you go. So. Why do we? They should fill up Times Square. These are people that get there twelve hours earlier than midnight, and and evacuate all of their bodily functions in their pants. They don't give a damn about a pandemic. <laughs> exactly. Let them have it. Mask. Really, mask, this is nuts. Let it go. <laughs> it, the universe is in charge. If the universe wants to wipe us out, there's nothing we can do. Let's just enjoy. It's a short <laughs> dance. Ask the dinosaurs how that worked out for them. I mean, really, uh, they the, may the, be back. I mean, this could 2022 could be the year when the dinosaurs are like, you know what? Yeah, we're coming we're back. Coming we got a we got a, a a bad rap there. We're coming back, and we're just gonna, you're just gonna have to Surprise! accommodate us. Oh, I, I don't mean to end on this note, but did you see that story? Where was this zoo where the tiger? Florida. Where was this? It I was, think it was Florida. Okay, and tiger. Somebody was cleaning the cages. Right, and went into an area where they shouldn't have been, and the tiger bit the guy's arm, and they killed the tiger. What? Once again. How many times do we have to go through this? It's a zoo. If you don't have a plan for when people encroach in the animal habitat, Besides killing the animal, you shouldn't be a zoo because your whole Take purpose, animal, yes, is to protect the tiger. animal. Yes. The tiger was doing what it's programmed to do. You're a zoo. This is an idiot who shouldn't have been there. Okay. And on that note, George, thank you for your friendship. <laughs> I, I was going to say, let's, let's, run the, let's run the thanks to everybody who was on the show last year. I've got okay. that list handy. Let's, let's run that real quick. Okay. Now let's do We were busy. All right. Mm -hmm. Here's the cannoli coming down the aisle. Take it. It's nice. Look at that cannoli. Now, I would imagine the schnauzer is going to get some special attention on New Year's Eve. What should you do with it? You know, I would drench the schnauzer in <laughs> champagne, but I hear it might tingle. So, but, you know, I want yeah. your schnauzer happy. Yeah. Do what you can do. Yeah, what you make need the to. schnauzer happy tonight because that's the way you start the year with a happy schnauzer. Happy schnauzer, happy life. Thank you for listening this past year. Happy New Year. Hope you have some fun tonight. And we're back on Monday. The Gear Force, we have kicked the tires and lit the fires. And now it's time to put the landing gear down. Gear down. All right. This is how we land. Good night. Gear Force. Yeah. If you like that, I got other stuff I think you're going to like. This is the Gear Force 